What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, what I want to go over is the downfalls of math training. For those of you that have seen my other videos, you know that when I started ultra running, I started with math training. Math training is maximum aerobic function. It was popularized by Dr. Phil Mathetone. Basically it's 180 minus your age and then plus or minus five based on your running history. If you get injured, if you get sick often, things like that. This was a great way for me when I first started running. I was able to build an aerobic base. I was able to run a lot without getting injured. And it was just a great way to start running again. Over the last year though, I have switched up the way that I train. And I went from running only math training to rate of perceived exertion. And it helped me realize that there are some downfalls to math training. And in this video, that's what I want to go over. Before we dive in though, I want to give a quick update. For those of you that did not see my last video, it was about how I won a 50 mile ultra marathon. I'll link that down below. I'm going to be doing a fundraiser for multiple sclerosis awareness on May 11th. It's going to be a 72 hour ultra marathon from May 11th to May 14th. My goal is to run 220 miles over those 72 hours. So I want to just bring that up if you're interested in donating or if you're interested in supporting the cause and want to share it with your community, feel free to grab the link down below, click it if you want to donate or copy and paste it and share it with your community. So let's get into the first pitfall of only training by math. The first thing that I think is a big issue is you really have an issue with consistency of pace. This becomes an issue because when you're going out, you're going to be running at, like I said, 180 minus your age. It's your heart rate that you're going to be following. But there are so many things that can affect your heart rate. Your caffeine intake, how hot you are, did you hydrate before, are you dehydrated, things like that. So every time you go out to run and to train, you're going to be running potentially at a different pace. I think that sets you up to not have as good results as you would otherwise. Because if you can't run at a certain pace consistently, you really can't adapt to that pace, you can't adapt to that effort. So I think that does hold you back. So I'd say that is the first downside of math training, is that there's a lack of consistency in your pace and in your training runs due to the fact that your heart rate is going to be affected by so many different things. The second downfall of training by math training is that you are not going to have the leg turnover that you might want on race day you're running every day at 180 minus your age, this can cause you to not run as efficiently as you would like. This can cause you to not be able to get used to leg turnover. This can be an issue because a lot of times when I was running by math training, I would be shuffling on my runs. I wouldn't really be running that well. I wouldn't be moving my legs too quick. And I got into this habit of always running at an effort where I was kind of shuffling. When it came to race day, I would struggle with leg turnover. So I think your leg turnover is limited when you are running by math. So I think that's the second downfall that you have when you train by math training. The third downfall of math training is the fact that you're going to have a hard time actually tracking an accurate heart rate. One of the ways that a lot of people that train by heart rate get an accurate reading is they pay for a chest strap. But if you're not looking to pay for a chest strap, you're not looking to add an accessory to your training, it's gonna be hard to figure out what is an accurate heart rate. And quite frankly, I am not completely sold that a heart strap is always going to be very accurate. For me personally, I would run and I would track my heart rate by my watch that I wear. And that is also something that's not terribly accurate all the time. Some days I'd be running really easy and my heart rate would say it was north of 160. Some days I'd be running very hard and my heart rate would be below 155, my math heart rate. So for me, when I was running and training by my heart rate, I never really knew if my watch was accurate. So I think that's one of the other challenges. It's gonna be hard to make sure that you're running at the accurate heart rate that your math heart rate should be at. The fourth and final downside of math training is the stress of always trying to run at a certain heart rate. I think this takes away the joy of running. If you're running, it's probably because you enjoy it. You're probably training for a race that means something to you. And if you are training for that race, you're getting stressed out every time you run because your heart rate gets a little bit jacked up and because you feel like you have to walk or slow down. That can cause an issue in your training and make you 
not enjoy the process. And if you're going to be running, the process matters a lot. You want to enjoy the process. You want to enjoy being out there and getting your runs in and getting your miles in. You don't want to be stressed out looking at your watch and thinking, I need to slow down. I need to walk. Why is my heart rate low? And asking yourself all of these questions that otherwise you wouldn't have. So for me, what I have done is, uh, like I said in the beginning of this video, I have moved to rate of perceived exertion training. The way that I do it is I basically think to myself, what is the effort that I am running at on a scale of zero to 10? I try to focus in on running at efforts between three to four during my runs. And then I do some runs that are gonna be harder pace and harder effort. A lot of times I base that off of how I feel in the morning and how I feel when I'm getting ready for my run in the middle of my run. Some days I know that I just want to run easy. Today, for example, I'll pop my run up on the screen. I did 14 miles and I ran that between the three and four for the whole run and my heart rate was 148, according to my watch over the course of that run, which is definitely a low heart rate for me. So basically by using rate of perceived exertion, that has helped me to run better, run stronger, run harder, continue to build my aerobic base, and quite frankly, show up better on race day. Like I said, I won my 50 mile race that I did two weekends ago, and honestly, I don't know if it would have had the same outcome if I never switched my training to rate of perceived exertion. So with that being said, those are the downsides of math training and what I have done in order to help my training, help my running, and help me get better results when it comes to race day. Let me know down in the comments how you train. Is it by rate of perceived exertion? Is it by math? Or is there something else that you're doing for your training that has worked? I appreciate you making it to the end of the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.